Hi friends, welcome to this interesting video on chemical bonding. We are going to look at why chemical bonds are formed and what are the types of bonds uh, and I'm going to make the concepts really easy for you. So be sure to watch the entire video. And guys, if you haven't checked out our website, manochaacademy.com, please do check it out. We've got these awesome courses on physics, chemistry and maths for CBSE class 9 and 10. And we've also got physics ICSE class 9. So guys, do check out our courses. I'll put the links below and uh, we've got great discounts going on for a limited time. So please do check out our courses and do share it with your friends. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button right now and do uh, share it out with your friends. So welcome guys for this interesting class on chemical bonding. I know a lot of you requested for this topic. So here I am uh, taking you through chemical bonding in chemistry. So before we start on chemical bonding, let's talk about friendship bonds, right? So all of us have so many friends and we make lifelong friendship bonds. And uh, why do we make friends? So that we can have fun, you know, uh, joke around with each other. And these friends help us and support us throughout our lives. Similarly, so just like we have friendship bonds, we are going to talk about the friendship bonds of atoms, which are chemical bonds. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So guys, as you can see in the picture here, can you see there are different types of atoms here, right? And if I go ahead and mark out some of the atoms, so these atoms are representing the white ones are hydrogen atoms, let's say, okay, the white guys, uh, the, the dark atoms here, right? The grayish ones are the carbon atoms, which I'm going to mark here, okay? And uh, these, uh, the red one here is the oxygen atom, okay? And can you see that there are these sticks or uh, things that are bonding these atoms? Can you see the bonds here, right? So these we call as chemical bonds, right? So you know that bonds are holding the atoms together, okay? And these are what are known as chemical bonds. So atoms com uh, combine with each other to form molecules and these uh, combination, right? So the force of attraction which holds the uh, which holds the molecule together is known as chemical bonds. Now let me ask you, why do atoms form chemical bonds? So we discussed about our friendship bonds, right? So guys, can you tell me why do atoms form chemical bonds? Right? And uh, some of you are asking, what is the difference between an atom and molecule? You know that a molecule, it can consist of one atom, like monoatomic molecules, but usually a molecule contains two or more atoms. It could come for, uh, from the same element or it could be from different elements. So very good. I see Shreyash has the right answer here. Vinay has the right answer. Excellent. Uh, science is life for stability, guys. Excellent. Excellent. So why do atoms combine? Very important uh, concept in chemistry. Chemical bonds are formed for stability. Okay. So just like everyone wants a stable life, a stable job, even atoms want a stable life. They want stability. And that is why they form chemical bonds so that the resultant molecule is stable and each atom in it is stable. Okay. And guys, have you played this uh, Jenga game before? So how many of you played Jenga? So I'm sure you've seen this, right? So can you tell me which uh, Jenga arrangement here is stable and which one is unstable? So can you see these pictures, guys? Right. So on your screen. So this is picture number one and picture number two. And if you played the Jenga game, I also enjoy uh, playing Jenga. And so here, can you see that this is a very unstable arrangement? Can you see that? Right. Because these uh, wooden blocks are going to fall down. Right. And very good. So the two is a nice stable arrangement. Can you see? Right. So this is for Jenga. Right. Or, you know, like a building or a set of bricks, what is stable, what is unstable, you have an idea, right? Or if you take a cone, you put it uh, on its base, it's stable. If you invert it, it's unstable, right? But what is stability in chemistry, right? What is the meaning of stability? It's very important to discuss that. So guys, I have two pictures of atoms here, right? So I've got, uh, let's again number them. This is, let's say, atom number one, okay? And this is atom number two. So based on your chemistry knowledge, can you tell me which atom is stable? Okay. And which atom or we should say which atom is more stable than the other? 
So come on, I want all of you to try here. Excellent, excellent guys. And it's great to see the response. And guys, if you haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button right now and do share it with your friends. Thanks guys for clicking the like button and uh, do share it out with your friends also. Great. Okay, so a lot of you I'm seeing, uh, very good, you're seeing the correct answer is the second atom is stable. And the first, more stable we can say than the first one. Now let's discuss why. What is special about the atoms here? So can you see in this picture, I've shown electron configurations, right? So this is actually a carbon atom here. Okay, so the first one is a carbon atom. So that is its nucleus. And guys, can you see the carbon, you know, has six electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Everybody see that on your screen? And this atom, right? So guys, do you know which atom this one is? And it has eight electrons. One, two, uh, sorry, uh, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, right? It has 10 electrons here. Carbon, it has six electrons. So we can write down its electronic configuration of carbon is two comma six. Okay, and the electron configuration of this guy, let's write it down. Okay, the electron configuration of this guy is gonna be two comma eight. So do you know which atom is this? Very good. I see Apollo has given the right answer. Mayank uh, Jadav, very good. So this is neon. Okay, excellent. Let me write it with a different color here so that it's more visible. So this is neon, excellent. And it is more stable uh, or it is uh, it is a stable atom because very good guys the octate is filled so the stability in chemistry is decided by the electron arrangement okay and what is the rule so the rule is uh, at least here we can see uh, an atom is stable because it has eight electrons in its outermost shell okay so it has eight electrons in its outermost shell. And as you guys are saying, you guys know it already. Awesome guys, this is called the octate rule in chemistry, right? Just like if you read the Harry Potter book, in Harry Potter, seven is the magic number, right? Uh, there are seven books, right? I think seven horcruxes, seven is the magic number. Here, it's eight in chemistry. If you have eight electrons in the outermost shell, it is a stable atom, okay? That is its stability. It does not want to combine with others. But carbon, it's not that carbon atom, we, we can say uh, completely unstable, right? It is there, but it wants to combine with others to become more stable, okay? So carbon's goal is uh, trying to get to this state, the octate state. So this is the goal of carbon to try to get to eight electrons, okay? And it's just not octate, right? So you must be, uh, you must have heard of this. The stability rule is actually twofold. It's either the duplet rule, okay? So let's talk about it. So what is the stability rule? The duplet or the octate. And let's discuss what that means, okay? So do in the duplet rule, right? There's basically, uh, for an atom to be stable, it should have only one shell. Guys, can you see here? There's only one shell here. If it has only one shell, if the atom has only one shell and two electrons, okay? Can you see one, two, and two electrons in the outermost shell. So if one shell, and two electrons, then also this atom is stable. And guys, do you know which atom I've shown here on the screen? So what is the atom, uh, the left atom on the screen? Come on guys. Excellent. I see Satya Narayan Mandal has the right answer, right? Uh, Namita has the right answer, superb. Uh, right, uh, Sodami, uh, Behura, you have the right answer. Very good, Shreyash. So this is helium, right? It's following the duplet rule in chemistry, right? So if you have one shell and two electrons, or, right, so stability can be either this or duplet, right? Or you can have a configuration where atoms have eight electrons in the outermost shell. Please look carefully here. Eight, can you see the last shell? You don't have to look at the inside one. It could have, if it has eight electrons in the outermost shell, like we discussed in the outermost shell, then also it is stable. So it's called either the duplet, duplet means two, or octate, just like octopus, octate means eight. Okay, excellent, excellent. So this, uh, so it's either the duplet or the following the octate rule. And you know who, who follows these rules? Uh, so who, uh, who's the, what type of atoms follows these rules? Uh, these rules, it's the noble gases, right? Or we say inert gases. You know they have the, 
the stable configuration. So noble gases or inert gases, they either follow dew plate or octate like helium, neon, right? So this guy was neon, let's write it down here, right? Uh, similarly, argon, xenon, right? So these uh, gases, they have eight electrons in the outermost shell. So all the atoms are trying to become a, a noble gas or an inert gas. They want to get stability, right? And that is why they form chemical bonds. So this is the key concept in chemistry, why an atom forms chemical bonds to get to this stable configuration, with this, which is either the duplet or the octet rule, okay? Great guys, is it clear to you? And so look at the configuration. This one is two comma eight. So this can be written simply as two, and this one is two comma eight. So the last shell is the key shell, right? In the outermost shell, okay? Right, that's what we have here. So now let's talk about the types of chemical bonds, right? So we've uh, understood what is a chemical bond, the force of attraction between the atoms, right? That holds them in the molecule and they do that for stability. So they can be classified into ionic bond, right? Covalent and or coordinate. So these are the three important types of covalent, uh, of chemical bonds, right? So for ionic bonds, we can also write, they're known as ionic or another word is, so you might have heard of this, or electrovalent, okay? So that's another name. It means the same thing, ionic or electrovalent. Covalents are also known as or molecular. Okay, so that's another name for covalent bonds and we are going to discuss them, right? And the last one, coordinate, they are also called dative bonds. Okay, so what is the difference, right? Why these different types of bonds? Okay, so what is, uh, because the key thing, as you can see, they're trying to get to stability, which means they're trying to get to the correct stable electron configuration, right? So electrons are the key here, not the protons, not the neutrons. They're getting to the key electronic configuration, right? Okay, so to get to that, how do they do that, right? So for, ele uh, for ionic or electrovalent bond, they basically do, the atoms do a transfer of electrons for stability. So the key point is transfer of electrons, okay? So that's when an ionic bond is formed. And guys, do you know what happens for covalent or molecular bonds, okay? So what happens is it's basically done through sharing, sharing of electrons, right? So that is done through sharing of electrons, okay? And date coordinate or dative is special. It's also sharing of electrons, but the shared pair comes from one atom only, okay? So the shared pair of electrons comes from one atom. In the covalent or molecular, both the atoms are sharing the electrons, comes from one atom, okay? And guys, in this class, our focus is gonna be on ionic or electrovalent bonds and covalent bonds. Uh, I won't be going into the details of coordinate or dative bonds in this class because the key uh, chemical bonds are ionic and covalent and I'm going to make the concepts crystal clear and show you how to draw the electron, uh, electron diagrams, right? So the electron dot structures, I'm going to show you that, right? Okay, let's go ahead and discuss the details of ionic or electrovalent bonds, okay? Very important. So ionic or electrovalent bond, the key point is they are formed by the transfer, as we said, right? Formed by the transfer of electrons. So let's take a look, what is the transfer going on here and why it happens, okay? So if you take a look at these atoms here, I've got these two atoms on the screen uh, for you and let's take a look at their electron configuration really carefully, okay guys? So, uh, and you can try to identify which atom these are, right? So if, uh, how do you look at the electron configuration? So we start from the center, uh, from the inner innermost shell, right? And so basically we have, you can see there are two electrons, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one. So this uh, this guy has a configuration of two comma eight comma one. Do you guys see that, right? So two comma eight comma one. Guys, can you tell me which atom is this? So come on, can you tell me which atom is uh, the first one? which has two comma eight comma one, that means it has 11 electrons. Excellent guys, I see Gotham, right? Uh, Kirit, you have the right answer. Srinivas, very good. So this is uh, basically the sodium atom, right? Can you see the sodium atom? And what is this atom on the right side? Uh, let's take a look at its electron configuration. So if you take a look, it has two, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
So the electron configuration of this guy is 2, 8, 7. Guys, do you see that? So can you tell me which uh, atom is the one on the right? Come on, guys. Okay, so very good. I see uh, Guru Sahil Singh says cl uh, chlorine, right? Uh, what do you guys think? Come on. Okay, so Vinay says chlorine, Jay ready. Excellent, guys. A lot of you are giving the right answer. Sorry if I'm not able to take everybody's name, uh, but it's great to see the interaction here. So chlorine, okay? And now let's see how they are going to combine these atoms and why do they combine? So first thing that you can see here is that they don't have a stable state. Why? Because if you look at sodium, it has only one electron in the outermost shell. Can you see? It's comma one. For stability, it needs to get to eight. Same way if you look at chlorine, it has seven. For stability, it needs the outermost shell, right? Not the, not the one inside. The, you'll say there's two comma eight is there, eight is there. No, the outermost, which is called the valence shell or the outermost shell needs to have eight electrons, okay? So what are the options here? What can sodium do to get to a stable state? Either it can uh, lose that last electron, right? Give it away or it needs seven more. Do you guys agree? So sodium has two options, either give away that last electron. So this guy I'm talking about. So either it needs to give away this electron here, right? Which I've marked with the yellow color, right? Either it needs to give that away or it needs seven more. Now let's take a look at chlorine. What is the chlorine's option? Either it has to give away all the seven, right? Or it has to gain one because it has seven there and its goal is to get to eight, okay? So what is the best option here, right? So for sodium, it's easier to lose one electron, right? Than gain seven more. That's a more difficult task, needs more energy, right? So sodium will want to lose this electron or transfer this electron. So he needs a friend who's ready to accept an electron. So sodium is ready to give away or transfer its electron. So there's gonna be a transfer of electron, right? Very important. And this electron we are talking about, which I'm going to color in the yellow there, okay? And chlorine is ready to accept one because it's easier to gain one than lose seven, right guys? So if he's ready to accept this electron, so this will, what will happen here? Can you see sodium is going to basically become, the configuration will become two comma eight when it loses that and chlorine will become two comma eight comma eight if it gains one. Excellent guys. So Mitra says sodium will lose, right? The electron and chlorine will gain one electron, superb. So there's basically a transfer of electron. And now let's say, why is an ionic bond formed, okay? So if you take a look, if sodium loses one electron, so if I represent this by sodium, right? So two comma eight comma one is basically sodium, right? This is sodium, but what is two comma eight? Since it's lost an electron, is it an atom any, anymore? No, because it's lost the electron, it's basically going to become the sodium ion. Can you see that? Because now it has one less electron, so it's going to become a cation. Can you see? So it forms a positive ion or what you know is called a electropositive ion or a cation, right? So sodium is going to become a cation. And what about chlorine? Chlorine is going to gain that and it's going to become uh, two comma, so if uh, this is chlorine, this is basically representing Cl minus, the chloride ion, and this is basically the anion. So can you see what happens after the transfer of electron? This guy, so let's say this transfer happened, right? Uh, so this electron goes from here, okay? So it's no longer here, so I'm gonna put a cross here, and it's gone and transferred over here. So let's go ahead and place it here, right? So can you see this whole sodium thing is basically gonna become positively charged. Do you guys agree? And what is happen, going to happen to the chlorine, guys? Chlorine atom is going to become a chloride ion. Not chlorine ion, we say chloride ion in chemistry, and it's going to have a negative charge, okay? And that is why it's called an ionic bond. Look at the name, guys, ionic, because you have ions. The sodium ion here, Na+, plus, the cation, and can you see on the right, the negative ion. And positive, negative, they attract each other. So that is why we have an ionic or also known as electrovalent bond form. Got it guys? So is that making sense? We are having an ionic bond here between these friends and our friends are sodium and chlorine. So they are forming an ionic bond because the one is positively charged, the other is negatively charged. You know in, uh, from science, right? Positive, negative attract each other. And this is why it is called an ionic or electrovalent bond because we have ions formed as the result of this, right? It's no longer atoms. 
they are ions now and it's a very strong bond because the plus minus they attract each other very good Shrey Shoshu says with a strong electrostatic force excellent right so there is a very strong electrostatic force here let's write that electrostatic force right and that is attracting these guys clear guys so this is called an ionic or electrovalent bond and who forms an ionic or electrovalent bond can you see it is usually formed right it is formed between a metal right we have a metal here and a non-metal so ionic or covalent or electrovalent bonds are formed between a metal and a non-metal why because metals they have tendency to lose electrons they have one two or three electrons in the outermost of valence shell and non-metals they have uh, four five six or seven so they have tendency to gain an electron and that is why very important to know ionic bonds are formed between metals and non-metals clear right because one has a tendency to lose an electron the other guy has a tendency to gain so they like doing the transfer of electrons excellent guys so this was the uh, complicated uh, the full diagram that we discussed now let's see how we can uh, express or uh, show it in a simple electron dot structure diagram so we are going to discuss this diagram it's very important because we don't want to draw all these complicated structures each time right so as we discussed this was the sodium atom here right so guys, this was sodium and this was chlorine. So let's take a look how to draw the electron dot structure for this. So guys, carefully follow me and I'm going to make it really easy on how to show it, right? So first we uh, look at sodium, right? So I'm going to use the red color, just the matching color for sodium. So we have sodium here, right? And you need to draw, rather than drawing all the 2, 8, 1, you should only be showing the valence electrons because the valence electrons, you know, are the key. So how many valence electrons does sodium have guys? So can you tell me how many valence electrons does sodium have? Okay, so who can tell me how many valence electrons in sodium? And guys, if you haven't hit the like button, please hit it right now and do share it out with your friends. Excellent guys, I see the right answer here. So sodium, can you see it has only one valence electron? So we are going to represent it here. So let's represent it with the dot, okay? And what about chlorine? So we are not showing the whole configuration. We're just representing the dot and let's write the chlorine atom. So chlorine atom, excellent. It has one, right? So very good. And guys, chlorine has how many valence electrons? We are going to uh, show that it has seven, right? So let's go ahead and show that here. So one, two, three, four. And usually the electrons, you know, they're drawn in pairs and I'm drawing it with a cross here. Some, some of you in school, you might be drawing all of these with a dot, that's fine. But usually, you know, it's good to show uh, one element with a dot and the other one with a cross. Excellent guys, seven electrons for chlorine. Okay, so that's how we've shown it. And now we need to show the transfer. Okay, so when these guys are gonna combine, this valence electron is gonna go and get transferred here. Clear guys? And you can put a plus here to show that, you know, these guys are trying to combine. So this is our simple electron dot structure, also known as uh, right dot and cross structure because we're using dot and cross here, okay? And so what is gonna happen as a result of this? Sodium loses the electron. So we don't have to show any electrons for it because the valence electron is gone and you need to show these box brackets to show that there's an ion now, okay? And I'm gonna mark it with a positive charge, clear? And now let's uh, draw what is the scenario for chlorine. So chlorine is basically here and uh, we're gonna draw Cl, right? And we'll mark all these uh, crosses to show the valence electrons, chlorine has seven of them, and it accepted, right? It accepted the uh, electron from uh, sodium, right? So we're gonna show that here. And as I said, the electrons are shown in pairs, you know, right? So we'll put the sodium's electron here. Excellent, right? And we are gonna um, show this also with this uh, box bracket, right? Because it's an ion and you need to write the charge. It is minus one, had it been minus two, you have to write two minus. Clear guys, so can you see that? So this is how we show the, uh, the ionic bond, the electron dot structure of how the ionic bond is formed. And guys, if you want to write the further steps, sometimes school ask you to write the formula, so you can write that. So basically, what do we have here? NaCl, okay? Of course, I'm using all these colors so that, you know, it's more colorful and easier for you, but you'll be doing it with a single color, but dot and cross helps to differentiate here. So guys, please take a look at my diagram. Any mistakes that you see, anything I might have missed, clearly, can you see the transfer of the electron here, right? 
and that's how the ions are being formed. Please mark the ions. Don't forget to write the sign. And that is why we have NaCl. Sometimes you know the school might want you to write Na plus Cl minus in the last step also just to show that they are ions, okay? Or you can write NaCl, whichever way they like, you know? Or simply NaCl. So here we've shown the formation of the compound sodium chloride, right? What is our compound formed here? Sodium chloride. And it is an electrovalent bond because it is formed, very important to know, electrovalent or ionic are formed between a metal and a non-metal. Do you guys see that? Very, very important, okay? And I've shown you how to draw the electron dot structure. Guys, let's practice one more electron dot structure for magnesium chloride. And I know it's hard for you to show me in the chat, but guys, sit with a pen and paper and go ahead and try this. So let me uh, show you the tips and tricks of how to draw the structure. First, before you jump into the structure, the first thing is to ask yourself, what is the type of bond? So you need to be, you know, like James Bond and try to identify which type of bond. Is it ionic or covalent? Because we are not talking about coordinate right now. So our main options are, is magnesium chloride an ionic bond or covalent bond? And guys, can you tell me? So you need to be the James Bond and tell me that which type of bond. So before you jump into the drawing, excellent. It is an ionic bond. Why guys? Why is it an ionic bond? Because you know that magnesium is a metal, right? So magnesium is a metal and guys, chlorine is a non-metal. And you know that the bond formed between a metal and a non-metal is an ionic bond. So first think of that. Next thing important to think, what is the formula of magnesium chloride? So magnesium has valency two, chlorine has valency one. So if you do a crisscross in your rough work, you're gonna get MgCl2. Very, very important. Before you jump into the diagram, guys, make sure you know the formula, you know the type of bond, okay? Now let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's go ahead and draw our electron dot structure. Excellent, guys. I hope you're enjoying this video. And guys, uh, great to see so many likes out there. And please hit the like button. If you haven't hit it already, I'm gonna make chemical bonding super easy for all of you, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, draw magnesium chloride. So magnesium, you know, right? It has two comma eight comma two. That is its electron configuration. I'm not drawing all of that, right? And chlorine we saw is two comma eight comma seven. So let's draw the diagram, guys. So magnesium is gonna have two electrons in its valence shell. Thank you, guys. Thanks for the likes. So it, we are only gonna show the two valence electrons and usually we show it as a pair, okay? Or if you like, some of you, you know, you like to draw the pair on top, you can draw it anywhere you want. That's no problem. Plus chlorine, okay? So there'll be a chlorine here and that's going to have, uh, you know, two com uh, the seven electrons, right? Because two comma eight comma seven, but we will only mark the valence electrons. Now, uh, one interesting thing is, can you see we are looking for MgCl2. MgCl2 is our goal. We have only one chlorine atom, okay? So uh, one electron from magnesium can be transferred to chlorine and you can see that it's going to get its octate state, okay? It's going to get eight electrons. Oh yeah, I think I forgot to mention that, guys. If you see here, can you see that chlorine has its octate state, eight electrons, right? And sodium also lost it, so it's two comma eight, which again, it got its stability, right? Octate state. So same thing here, chlorine will want to accept one, but it doesn't want two because it wants eight, right? So it's got it. So it's actually, this, there's gonna be a second atom of chlorine who's gonna be accepting the other one, right guys? Do you agree? Because it's MgCl2, right? So there's another atom of chlorine which will accept magnesium's second electron. So that's why you need to draw two of them. Clear guys? Awesome. And now we go ahead and draw this. So again, the same thing, we are gonna show magnesium in the bracket because it's an ion. And what is the charge I need to write for magnesium? Because it's losing two electrons. So what will its charge be? Of course, positive, but two plus. Right, guys? Excellent. Raja says, Raja Mukherjee says two plus. Absolutely right. And guys, what about chlorine? Okay, so what do you think uh, chlorine will be written here? It will become chloride, right? And will chloride be two minus? No, chlorine, it has got, uh, so here let's draw its, uh, original seven uh, electrons shown with the crosses and then it got magnesium's electron which i'm going to show with the red dot here okay but each chloride is going to be basically one minus right or simply minus okay but we need to represent two chlorides so usually we write it two here okay so uh, guys one important thing to note very important let me erase that two 
uh, it's a uh, lot of you might want to think let's write the two here but that is not the convention okay you may ask me why it's just a convention guys not that this is not wrong but this is not the way to show it so in by convention it is wrong so I'm going to cancel this two, and we need to put the two here right in front of because it's two chlorides okay so please remember this is how you represent the uh, the dot and cross structure for ionic bonding okay don't forget that guys can you see that and look here magnesium has lost that uh, final electron uh, the two electrons so it's now uh, can you see magnesium is now uh, if it loses this it's going to be two comma eight right so it's got its octate state stable state and each chlorine atom has gained one okay so here it's seven plus one over here so can you see that it's going to be eight here as you can see in the diagram and so basically what we have over here is MgCl2, our ionic compound or electrovalent compound. Excellent, guys. Excellent. So, is this crystal clear to you how to draw the uh, the electron dot structure? And so, all of you can now be James Bond. You know, main question: What to ask? Is it ionic or covalent? Think carefully. Metal and non-metal. Metal and non-metal were combining, so it's definitely going to be an ionic bond. Okay, because metal tends to lose electron non-metal wants to gain so there is a transfer can you see in the yellow arrow there's clearly a transfer of electrons excellent guys so is everyone clear awesome let's go ahead and move on to the next type of chemical bond which is covalent bond okay covalent bond and what is the key thing in the difference between ionic and covalent ionic was remember transfer of electrons but covalent covalent is sharing of electrons okay so sharing of one or more pairs of electrons. So that's the key difference. There it was transfer, here it is sharing. And guys, you know sharing is caring, right? And these atoms are really caring atoms because they want stability, okay? So let's take a look, why are they doing sharing? Why not transfer? So guys, can you tell me which, at uh, so here there are these two atoms, right? Can you see? So we've got two atoms on our screen here. These are separate atoms. Can you tell me which atom are these, okay? Can you see each of these atoms have only one electrons? Right, I agree, sharing is caring, right? So guys, can you tell me? Very good, uh, so guys, go ahead and say, uh, I see a uh, guy says hydrogen, right? Srinivas says hydrogen, what do you guys think? Come on, so this atom is clearly hydrogen, right? Because you know hydrogen is the simplest atom, it has only one electron, as you can see here. Only one electron in its valence shell. Okay, and guys, can you tell me is hydrogen a metal or a non metal? So, come on, who can tell me what is hydrogen a metal or a non metal? Right, so I want all of you to tell me. So, this is clearly hydrogen is it a metal or a non metal? And we have these two hydrogen atoms trying to combine here. Okay, great. I see. Oh, some of you are saying metal. So, guys, this is a very important thing. You guys should be very clear what is hydrogen. Of course, it's in. Uh, you know, group one of the periodic table, it's there with the alkali metals, but hydrogen is a gas, okay? And clearly, we don't have any metals which are gases, so you can remember that way, hydrogen is clearly a non-metal. Please remember that, okay? So I've been writing non-metal in green, so I'll write that, you know? So hydrogen is clearly a non-metal. It's a gas, right? Okay? And non-metals, okay, very important to know, metal and non-metal atoms, they have ionic bond, but non-metal, non-metal, they form covalent bonds. So a non-metal and a plus a non-metal atom will give us a covalent bond. And let's take a look why. Okay, so this gives us a covalent bond. Because let's see why they will be, so how will they get the stability? So you can see that first hydrogen atom says to, to uh, gain stability, it wants to get to the duplet state, right? So that's an option here, uh, either to get to the duplet state by uh, gaining the electron, or maybe it says, I want to lose it and just become an ion, right? Same for the other one. So what these guys end up doing is they end up sharing their electron because uh, the non-metals, they don't want to lose the, uh, they want to gain electron, okay? Right, can you see that? Okay, so great to hear that you guys are enjoying the class. Thanks a lot, guys. So here, can you see that the uh, both the, the these are non-metal atoms and they want to, uh, they don't want to lose the electron, right? You know, non-metals want to gain an electron and here both are non-metals, so they end up sharing the electron. And if they share this electron, right? 
right? So let's say I'll just remove the one electron here, the name. So if these uh, electrons end up getting shared with each other, okay? So what is the meaning of sharing? That this electron is going to be present for this atom and for the other, okay? So we can represent this thing like this, you know? So the sharing of the electrons can be shown like this. So here we have the uh, hydrogen. So let's draw that hydrogen here, right? The nucleus, okay? And uh, let's go ahead and draw the electron shell. Okay, oh, that's not a very nice circle. Let me try, try to draw a better one. Okay, so here, and we can say another one is here. So there, can you see, and I'm going to show the electrons in pink color here. Let me use another color, let's say red here. Okay, and so they end up sharing the electron. So uh, it forms a shared pair of electron. And now these two electrons are sort of present in both. They're revolving around both the atoms. So uh, what is uh, hydrogen now? If you look at each of the atoms, how many electrons does each atom have now? Can you tell me? So now if you look at this sharing, right? How many electrons does each atom have after sharing? So come on guys, can you see that? So each hydrogen atom after sharing, it has two electrons. Do you guys agree with me? Very good, right? I see Mary says two, right? Excellent guys, okay? So both of them end up having two electrons, right? And this is, so they are getting to the duplet rule because you know, if there's only one shell and it has two electrons, it is the duplet rule, which helium has, right? So they've got to the helium configuration or the duplet configuration. And so it's very stable. And there you can see that is why the hydrogen molecule is basically H2. Can you see? So what is formed is we show the uh, covalent bond using this uh, line, right? Or what we call in chemistry as the stick right? So the chemical bond is shown with this line. And so basically what we have is the hydrogen molecule, right? Guys, can you see this is the bond which I've shown with the green line here, right? So this is the bond between the hydrogen atoms, okay? And this bond contains one pair of shared electrons, okay? So very important to know that is why this is known as a single covalent bond. Let's write that down, single covalent, okay? Why single covalent? There are two electrons, so that doesn't make it a double covalent. It's a single covalent because one shared pair of electrons, right? So one shared pair of electrons. Clear guys, can you see that? So this is how the hydrogen molecule, right? So do you know the H2? I, I think all of you know the hydrogen molecule is represented with the H2 and now you know why it is H2 because each hydrogen atom is not so stable. It has only one electron. But when two hydrogen, when these two hydrogen friends get together, they end up sharing that electron, right? So both of them, it's like, you know, you are sharing chocolates with your friend, sharing is caring. So here each hydrogen atom is not holding on to its electron. It allows the other one also to have it. And so it's a win-win situation. Both get two electrons and that is how we get H2. Okay, super clear. And that is how you have the, uh, the H2 molecule, right? And now how we, uh, let's go ahead and try to draw it in its electron dot structure. So here we've shown the simple way, right? So how do we draw the electron dot structure of this? Very simple. Uh, let's go ahead and do that here, right guys? Uh, so let's say this is, uh, we draw hydrogen. It has only one electron, so it's gonna be H. And the other atom is also hydrogen. This time I'm not gonna use cross, right? Because uh, it's the same atom, right? So I'm using dots here, can you see? So I'm drawing the dot structure here for you guys. So dot structure, okay? So H dot and H dot. And so then when you, when they basically combine, right? You're basically gonna get a situation like this, right? It's gonna share. So we write it close to each other. We write it in the center. And now you guys can even draw the circles to check the duplet rule is getting followed, right? So some teachers ask you to draw that or you can simply represent it like we saw as this. So this is basically our hydrogen. Uh, covalent bond with a single covalent bond. Clear guys? So this is how you dot uh, do the dot structure. And let's go ahead and practice it for other atoms also, okay? So here, what do we have here? Can you see what do you have? Uh, which atom do you have on your screen? And one interesting thing to note, I have now started to show the, uh, the electron dots in uh, the electrons uh, in pairs. Can you see guys? They are shown usually because the electrons, they exist in pairs. So can you see that? And do you know which atom is this? It has basically a configuration of two comma, can you see that? It's basically two electrons in the first shell, comma six, right? Two comma six. So guys, can you tell me which atom is this? Very good. Uh, Varun says oxygen. 
Abhav says oxygen, excellent guys. Uh, Shoman Mukherjee, very good guys. So this is clearly oxygen. So you should know your electron configuration or atomic numbers. It has eight electrons, right? And now oxygen guys, what is oxygen? Metal, non-metal, please think that. That's very important. What is oxygen? Oxygen guys, you know, is a, what is oxygen, can you tell me? Is it a metal or a non-metal? Very important to think in your mind. So oxygen, very good. It's a non-metal, right? Oxygen is a gas. And non-metals, they form covalent bond. Excellent. They end up sharing the electron, okay? And which electron they will uh, end up sharing? So can you see oxygen needs uh, two more electrons, right? It needs plus two here, plus two here to get to the octate, right? To get to eight in the outermost shell. So it will not end up sharing one electron each. It will end up sharing two each, right? So we'll have these guys being shared. So let's remove that plus and basically oxygen will end up sharing these pairs, right? So there will be two shared pairs of electrons from each atom. Can you guys see that, right? So that is how, and can you see after sharing, so let's draw its uh, electron dot structure, very simple. So we're gonna look, uh, write oxygen first, so oxygen, right? And uh, so it, again, we'll draw only the valence electrons. Don't draw all of them because electron dot structure is a simplification. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And plus here, one, two, three, four, five, six. And notice we are writing this uh, two together because we're writing them close by so that they're ready for sharing rather than writing them on the other side. So that's why they're written close to each other, these two shared pairs. So if we draw it again, it's gonna look something like this, right? And I'm using only dots because it's the same atom, okay? So it's bond between the similar atoms. And if you like guys, you can also show it's uh, uh, the entire octate rule. So you can draw that also. I'm showing it in yellow here. So can you see now after sharing, if you look at each of those yellow circles, how many electrons for each atom? Eight, okay? So it's gonna become two comma eight. This is how you show the electron dot structure for covalent bonds, right? Electron dot structure. Can you see that guys? very simple I've shown you and so the next step will be to show it with the stick bonds so oxygen will have two sticks right because they are two shared pairs can you see that and this is what forms our oxygen molecule O2 so guys do you see it and so therefore oxygen is basically having a double covalent bond double covalent right bond why double covalent because oxygen and oxygen when they combine right I'll just erase these for now, right? So after sharing, it's basically of this form, right? Oxygen and oxygen is having two sticks, right? So there are two covalent bonds between the atoms. Guys, can you see that? Very important. This is our double covalent bond, right? So very good. So uh, covalent bonds can be of different types, single covalent, double covalent. They can be also triple covalent, right? So can you see that? Because you are having a two shared pair of electrons. Excellent guys, so simple. And let's take a look at a nitrogen molecule. So guys, are you familiar with the nitrogen molecule? Again, first thing, nitrogen is N2, right? And nitrogen is a non-metal, right? You guys know nitrogen is a non-metal, so it's between two non-metal atoms, right? N2, right? So definitely nitrogen is forming a covalent bond. So how do we represent the simple electron dot structure? Come on guys. Let's go ahead and try. So nitrogen, uh, basically, you know, it has how many electrons? How many electrons does nitrogen have? It has seven total electrons, right? The atomic number is seven, guys, you know. And so the electron configuration is two comma five. Excellent, excellent. I see a lot of you are writing two comma five. Great to know your atomic numbers. It really helps you in this bonding chapter, you know, uh, so that, and you can easily derive the electron configuration based on that. So let's, and uh, remember, it's important only to represent the valence electrons. Don't draw all 2, 5 because electron dot structure, only the valence you show that. That's the simplification. Okay. So nitrogen, we know, um, right, it's going to form this uh, bond. So let's go ahead and draw. Uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, 5, right? I've represented like this. So let's say I'm representing this thing and these are our 5 electrons. Okay. But to gain stability, how many electrons does nitrogen need? Guys, can you tell me? To get stability, how many does it need? Each nitrogen molecule, again, they're non-metals, they don't want to give, give it away, they want to share. So to get to stability, it needs a plus three here, right, guys? So it needs plus three over here. So that, that'll make it stable, right? And that is why it wants to share three. 
So rather than, uh, so we want three electrons to be shared between the nitrogen. Excellent guys, a lot of you are writing three, superb. So please see here, we are not going to represent this in this pair, uh, pair form. We are actually going to uh, do some cheating here and represent it as a triplet, okay? So, so that it's easy to show the sharing of these three electrons, okay? So guys, can you see I've modified my diagram and please take a look, now I'm representing three dots here, okay? And we're using only dots because same type of atom so the electron dot structure will look something like this. So you bring the atoms close to each other and then you're wanting to share the uh, three electrons. So you put them in the center, three from here and three from here. And guys, you can go ahead and draw the circles if you like that. Or if your teacher asks you to do that, you please go ahead and draw that. And there you can see, can you see that each circle now has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Can you see that? Excellent guys. So nitrogen, this is how you represent the electron dot structure for the nitrogen molecule. Very important. A lot of times this diagram comes in your test. Okay. And so this is basically, we can represent it as the triple bond. Okay. So this is a triple bond here because there are three covalent bonds. Okay. So this is basically what we have here is a triple covalent bond, right? Triple covalent bond. Because why? There are three shared pairs, not three electrons, three shared pairs of electrons. Excellent. Chandan says triple covalent. Superb guys. Vineet says that. Very good. And so this is finally, we can say this is our N2 molecule. So it's good to write all the steps. In the first step, show the atoms with a plus, you know, trying to join and draw only their valence electrons. In the next step, you can show them coming close to each other and drawing their um, uh, the circles to show the uh, octet rule being satisfied and then you can go ahead and uh, complete and finish off by showing the uh, the triple covalent bond and so this is the simplification right so when we write it like this we are not showing all the electrons we are just showing that nitrogen has a triple bond and clearly you can see now each one each nitrogen atom is having the octet can you see that eight eight right so each one is getting its octet here excellent guys superb okay and guys now can you tell me uh, based on our knowledge what is going to be uh, the kind of bonding in a water molecule, right? Everybody knows about water, right? So uh, who can tell me what will be the bonding in water molecule? So here we are talking about water, which you know is H2O. So is it going to be, so guys, come on, be James Bond. Is it, the main question is, is it ionic or covalent? All of you know the formula of water, right? H2O. So how do you understand? So again, don't learn it up, you know, you can easily derive it. Because uh, you guys, you know, hydrogen, it's a gas, as we discussed, it's a non-metal, right? So hydrogen is a non-metal. What about oxygen? Oxygen is also a non-metal, right? So there's nothing to learn here. Just, and all you need to know, non-metal and non-metal, right? They together form a covalent bond. Because you know, the non-metals, they don't want to give away the electron. They want to accept. But you can't have two guys accepting, right? So you cannot have a transfer here. It's going to be a sharing. Excellent. I see Gauri Bhaga has the right answer, right? Uh, Rajana has the right answer. Excellent. Sumangal Chandra, covalent bond, right? Excellent, guys. It is not ionic, okay? Why? Because hydrogen is a non-metal. Oxygen is also a non-metal, okay? So don't think H as H+. Plus, okay? I know some of you are thinking, you know, of acids and all. So don't think of H+. Plus. It is a uh, clearly a covalent bond. Okay. And now we can see whether it's going to be single covalent, double covalent, triple covalent. Let's go ahead and uh, try to draw the electron dot structure of this. Come on guys. So this is really exciting, right? We are analyzing the molecular structure of these. So let's go ahead and draw hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. So hydrogen, I'm going to represent in the pink color here. Uh, so clearly, or let's put uh, oxygen in the middle here, right? So, you know, the, uh, for oxygen, it's going to be O right and here actually you know uh, let me show you a trick uh, usually you can cheat rather than going ahead to draw the bonding structure you can first think of what is going to be the type of bond so let me tell you a very important trick for that right uh, so if you take a look at oxygen right oxygen has a valency so why is it forming water because uh, hydrogen you know has valency one and oxygen has valency two what is the meaning of valency two it can form two bonds right with uh, hydrogen here. So the structure, you know, is going to end up something like this. Do you guys agree? Because oxygen has valency two, so it combines with two hydrogen. And if you look at these bonds, you can see oxygen is having two 
covalent bonds the two dashes why because valency is two hydrogen each hydrogen atom can have only one bond very good a lot of you are writing hoh with the dashes excellent right because oxygen has valency two so two bonds and each hydrogen atom has only one dash because valency one so you can actually do the reverse first think of the structure then you draw it it's much easier right rather than starting with the electron dots and all so you know your answer is going to be of this form or you know in some books you might see uh, you know the water molecule has a shape something like this right but here the shape is not important so i think this is enough for this discussion that water is a structure like this so let's quickly go ahead and draw its electron uh, dot structure so basically oxygen you know has six so we're going to keep uh, one two three four and one on either side because we know it's going to share with hydrogen right and we're going to draw hydrogen on this side and hydrogen is going to have one electron right oops too close so let's go ahead and draw hydrogen this side so hydrogen okay and another hydrogen on this side with a single electron and that i've shown with the cross because it's a different atom okay and now if we combine these what are we going to get guys so oxygen is going to become like uh, so we're going to represent oxygen like this right and uh, with the uh, this uh, electrons and hydrogen you put it uh, close to that and you're going to sorry with the pink color right so hydrogen we are going to have here and we're going to mark its cross right the electron with its cross and there you can see guys take a careful look can you see that oxygen now has its octate so if you draw the circle around oxygen oxygen has its octate and each hydrogen guy has its duplet okay it's getting really messy i think so let me draw that again a little more carefully okay so oxygen can you see has its octate here right and hydrogens each hydrogen has its duplet okay you can leave it uh, as that also even without drawing these circles so that is the structure of water and that is why the final form is this form right guys so the final form uh, is going to be of this form and so now can you tell me single covalent double covalent what is there triple covalent what is there in the water molecule so who can tell me guys come on please try okay some of you are asking is this for class 10 it's important for class 9 class 10 some of you even have it in class 7 and 8 but mostly students get this in class 9 10 though i've seen a lot of students having this topic covered in class 7 and 8 including these electron diagrams okay so some of you are saying double covalent bond i don't think i agree do you see a double so double covalent bonds look something like this guys okay so this is not double covalent because double covalent should have a double bond right this is not a double bond okay this is not a triple bond so please take a look there are two there's two single covalent bonds can you see that because there are only these single dashes right so there in this uh, molecule please take a careful look there are two single covalent bonds right there are uh, there are two bonds but each bond is one shared pair of electron so this class has uh, the, sorry this class right, this molecule has two single covalent bonds clear because can you see each one of them right with the marked with the yellow dash and that dash represents it's only used for covalent bonds not for ionic bonds it's special to these okay guys is that making sense to you so this is how you draw the uh, molecule of water excellent right so two single covalent bonds and guys do you know what is the formula of methane so let's try another one right so guys can you tell me what is the formula of methane come on guys so have you heard of this uh, compound what is methane's formula who can tell me here is this for cbse or icse it's important for both boards the chemical bonding diagrams are there for icse and cbse right so again it depends on your school which topic they're doing excellent guys excellent methane is ch4 superb it's a compound of carbon and hydrogen okay so again the james bond question is it ionic or covalent so who can tell me is the methane molecule is it going to be ionic or covalent that's the key question here right come on guys so for methane molecule is it going to be a ionic or covalent bond okay oswin says covalent right i'm seeing some co mostly covalent some are saying both okay so carbon you know is a non-metal right hydrogen as we discussed is a non-metal right so clearly we are going to have a covalent bond excellent guys because between non-metal and non-metal this will be of a covalent bonding so we know it's going to be sharing of electrons again we can cheat here you know we can look at the structure first so you know carbon has a valency of four right so let's go ahead and draw the 
four uh, dashes, if we call it, right, or sticks, right, four bonds for carbon, and hydrogen has valency one, right? So for each hydrogen atom, there's only one stick. You cannot have a situation like this. That'll be wrong, right? Because each hydrogen, uh, hydrogen has valency one, it can have only one bond, only one covalent bond, very important concept, okay? So can you see this? Great guys, great to hear you're uh, enjoying this class. So, uh, and guys, if you haven't hit the like button, please hit it right now and do share it out with your friends so that we can have more folks on the live class and watching our videos. And guys, do check out our website, manochaacademy.com. We've got awesome courses there uh, for CBSE class nine and 10 and also for ICSE class nine. So guys, do check out our courses. We'll try to launch more courses as well. Thanks guys for the likes. So take a look here methane molecule covalent bond clearly and can you do you agree with this structure carbon has valency four so four bonds don't forget that carbon valency four tetravalent hydrogen valency one so this makes sense right and now all we need to do you know translate this into its electron configuration so carbon will have uh, it's going to have four dots all around it right hydrogen we can show with four uh, each with a cross right so do you guys agree and I'm going to put it on all the four sides so that they can combine nicely. And these guys are going to combine, you know, so that plus should be somewhere there, right? Okay, uh, so the plus is here, right? So these guys are going to combine with it. Or for now, let, let me leave out that plus, you know, it's getting untidy. So you get the picture here and let's go ahead and draw the, let's bring them close to each other so that we can have the sharing, uh, right, of the electrons. So the hydrogen atoms come here. Uh, close to the carbon and now see like nice friends they are sharing their electrons can you see that guys and clearly you can see carbon now i'm not going to draw the circle can you see carbon has now eight electrons the four pink dots and the four cro uh, yellow crosses okay and each hydrogen has two electrons so you can see hydrogen is now got to its duplet each hydrogen atom has its duplet state right oops uh, not a good in writing let's write it again each hydrogen atom is in its duplet state and uh, the carbon is in the octate state, right? It has eight electrons. So see, that's why they've gained stability through sharing of electrons. And so the final structure is gonna look like what we had drawn earlier. As I said, you guys can, uh, you know, use the cheating or the back technique to first think of what is the structure, then you draw the electrons. That's absolutely fine and recommended. So we have this, and please take a look. Each of those dashes is, the sticks is representing a shared pair, right? And so finally we have CH4, right? So you must write the last step also where you write the formula of the compound. So very important, this is the formula of the methane molecule. Excellent guys, clear? Now let's talk about, we talked about the electron dot structure. Very important to discuss the properties of ionic versus covalent compounds. We've looked at uh, these bonds and how to draw the structures. So as we know that in uh, ionic compounds, you know, the key point is the particles are ions. Remember, there's a transfer of electron. So you have a cation and anion, okay? And the particles in covalent compounds are molecules. For example, hydrogen molecule, H2O, water molecule, right? Uh, okay, uh, then you have, um, so for example, guys, I have this glass of water here with me, right? So this glass of water, it contains water molecules in this glass of water, right? Water is a covalent compound. So it's having uh, water molecules present in it. The particles are not ions, they're water molecules, right? What about uh, uh, this thing, the other properties? The other second point is ionic compounds are hard solids. Why? Because the strong electrostatic force, right? So strong electrostatic force between the ions and these make them hard solids. Like, you know, sodium chloride, is a hard solid, right? Uh, the salt. And uh, if you take a look at uh, covalent compounds, because these bonds are relatively weak. So these bonds are weaker bonds, right? So very important property because the bond is weaker. So it tends to form gases, liquids, or soft solids. Okay, can you see that? Okay, let's take a look at the third point. Because the bond is strong, obviously they have high melting and boiling point because you need a lot of energy a lot of temperature to break down the bond to melt it or to boil it okay and the next one it has 
low melting and boiling point. If you take a look at covalent on the other hand, it's the opposite because weak bonds, so they have low melting and low boiling points, okay? The next one, uh, the ionic compounds, they're good conductors in molten or aqueous state because you know that when you take sodium chloride, so if you, as a solid, they're not good conductors. So it contains Na plus and Cl minus, right? Because the, uh, the ions are tightly attached to each other. So they're not free to move because for good conductors, you want the ions to move. But when you have it in molten, okay, molten means in a liquid state, when you heat sodium chloride enough or in an aqueous state, then these ions, they break down, okay, and the ions become mobile, they're free to move, and that is why they are good conductors, okay, so the ions can move, so that's the point. And then in covalent, uh, these are non-conductors in solid, molten, or aqueous, why? Because look at the first point, they are consisting of molecules. You know, you want ions, charged particles for being good conductors. Clear? Very important point. So see, using common sense, you can get these ideas. And you know, you can remember the next point with an example, sodium chloride. It's an ionic compound and it's soluble in water. You know from the experience, right? So it's soluble in water, but they are insoluble in organic solvents like alcohol, right? Or acetone and covalent. Usually, again, there may be exceptions, right? And covalent compounds, it's the opposite. They are insoluble in water but they're soluble in organic solvents like alcohol or other organic solvents, clear? So this is very, very important. And a lot of times, you know, in the test, they ask you to compare the properties. And as I suggested, read through the properties and think why. Why does it have a high melting point? Why high boiling point? Why is it soluble? Because of that strong bond or because it has the particles contain ions, okay? And one very important thing, remember, ionic compounds, what we learned, it's formed between a metal and non-metal. Covalent is formed between a non-metal and non-metal, right, guys? So here's a summary of what we learned today. Ionic or electrovalent bond, what is the key point? This is due to transfer of electrons, okay? So it is, these bonds are formed by the transfer of electrons, very important point. Okay, and uh, transfer of electrons and it is formed between a metal and a non-metal. Okay, please remember that. This is the key takeaway. And what about covalent compounds, right? So covalent compounds, you know, they are formed by sharing, sharing of electrons. Okay, and this is formed between, so sharing of electrons, right? And formed between non-metal and non-metal. Okay, so that was metal and non-metal. Here you need non-metal and non-metal. Okay is for covalent bonds and coordinate which we didn't talk about today okay we are out of time and i knew we wanted to do ionic and covalent in detail so co uh, covalent uh, in coordinate bond or dative bond there's again you know sharing of electrons but the shared pair comes from one atom only so shared pair of electrons from one atom only one atom only right and there are examples like for example the ammonium ion okay so you can explore that on your own so here's a summary of what are the three important things and as you saw in the class we talked about the first the most two important ionic and covalent bond uh, okay and guys i have a question for you so for all of you to try what type of bond is present in hydrogen chloride and again i would tell you guys the hint is b james bond think carefully right Think of the rule that we learned today and do let me know your answer by putting it in the comments below. So is hydrogen chloride an ionic bond, a single covalent bond, a double covalent or a triple covalent? And guys, I look forward to reading your comments. So guys, please do write it uh, uh, in the comments below and some of you write it really fast and I'll try to respond to you guys as soon as possible. It's great to see the response and you guys were awesome in today's class. Great to see so many likes and such excellent participation. I know a lot of you requested this chemical bonding topic. So here I am with that topic. And guys, if you haven't checked out our website, do check it out, manochacademy.com. A lot of people have taken the course and I'd like more of you to take it because these courses will really help you in your preparation. We have, I take more live classes on our website. So if you're excited about these live classes, Classes, come and join us these courses are at a very discounted price you know they're we've not kept it at a high price so that 
everybody can avail of these courses and they have interactive videos we have more live classes where we discuss more detailed concepts i show you the tips and tricks on how to solve the questions you know we have quizzes and questions and then you get your replies to the uh, doubts from me so guys do check it out on physics chemistry and maths and we'll try to launch more courses because we've been getting more requests so thanks a lot for your support guys and uh, do share out our channel with your friends and if you haven't hit the subscribe button please hit it right now click on the notification bell so that you don't miss a single live class that we have on youtube or any of the videos that we upload so guys do check it out and as i said if you want more live classes please go to manochacademy.com the sign up is free we have some free samples out there so do check it out and if you like it you can take the course all right guys thanks a lot for joining here's sandeep manocha signing off hope you enjoyed this chemical bonding video right so just like you have a lot of friendship bonds i hope you made a bonding with the chemical bonds today and uh, i really enjoyed the session you guys were super interactive all of you rock thanks a lot guys stay safe and keep on learning and yeah very good i see um, vinith is uh, writing never give up guys yes please keep on learning i'm sure all of you will do well okay just focus on your studies clear your concepts that's the main thing guys you must clear your concepts then things will seem more interesting and easy for you all right guys thanks for joining us and here i am signing off everyone uh, take care bye bye and uh, we'll see you in the next live session hopefully we'll have one on wednesday but uh, click on the notification bell and you should be seeing the notification so if you've been regularly watching the video definitely youtube will send you the notification so i take these classes typically at 8 p.m i know we've got a lot of requests for biology but guys sorry currently we have physics chemistry and maths we are trying to add biology course also soon uh, but currently these are, are the courses that we have to offer all right guys here's sandeep manocha signing off bye bye guys take care everyone see you